Hello, welcome. Take a moment, try this problem out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. They want us to algebraically determine the values of h and k, which you can see right here is h and k, to correctly complete the identity stated below. These two expressions are equal, that's an identity. So in other words, they want you to solve for h and k. How would I do that? On the left hand side right here, I want to multiply this binomial x minus 4 that by this trinomial. So what would I get? I get x times 2x squared, which is 2x cubed. I want to see what this thing equals. Uh, plus x times h times x, so it's plus h times xx, or x squared, plus 3x, right? x times 3 is 3x. And then I want to distribute this negative 4, get negative 8x squared, negative 4 times hx is negative 4hx, and then negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, and then we still have this plus k. If I simplify this down a little bit or rearrange it, I get 2x cubed, and then I'm going to put my x squareds together. I am going to put the negative 8x squared first, then plus hx squared. Then I have my x terms plus 3x, this term right here, and minus 4hx there. That's an h. And then minus 12 plus k. Now, you have this whole expression. That's the right-hand side multiplied out. It has to equal uh, what we have over here, this thing. So I want to write it below it. These things are equal. 2x cubed minus 10x squared plus 11x and then minus 7. I spaced this out because what's nice is that these two things are equal, right? We can, we can do a couple of things. We can subtract 2x cubed from both sides. Let me change colors. Uh, they're both equal things. And usually I write them next to each other. To show that but this is just a long expression so I don't think it'll fit nicely on the screen but then what we have is a situation where um, these things are equal and these things are equal and these things are equal how do I know that because uh, these are the terms involved with x squared these are the terms with x and this is just the constant terms and you actually just have to s you don't have to even specify that if you show that these two sides are equal you can now solve for each of them in other words, if you recognize that negative 12 plus k has to be negative 7 because you're, that's your constant term, you could just say that and then solve it. We can add 12 to both sides and k is 5. Here we have 3x minus 4hx equals 11x. Right? So I'm going to factor x out on this side and we have 3 minus 4h equals 11x. So I'm going to actually write the left-hand side differently. I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to say that it is 3 minus 4h times x. Now, I guess you could divide both sides by x here, assuming it's not 0. But it's probably easier to say that this coefficient of x has to equal this one in order for both sides to be equal. In other words, 3 minus 4h has to equal 11. And if we solve for h there, we can subtract 3 on both sides. 11 minus 3 is 8, divide by negative 4 on both sides, h is negative 2, we've solved for h and k, but we should also make sure that in this case, h, this h pops up again here, is still negative 2. We get negative 8x squared plus hx squared equals negative 10x squared. Again, factor out the x squared on the left hand side, and what's left is negative 8 plus h. So in order for negative 8 plus h times x squared, to be equal to negative 10 times x squared, what has to be true? Well, negative 10 has to equal negative 8 plus h. They have to be equal to each other. So negative 8 plus h has to equal negative 10. We add 8 to both sides, and we still get negative 2, and we've solved it. And uh, the versions I've seen, most versions I've seen in solving this problem, this is they're doing some variation of this work, something like that. Uh, I wanted to show you an, an alternate technique. Uh, an another nice way to solve this is to recognize that this polynomial, they're trying to factor it into these two terms, and this is kind of like our remainder right here. So if we take this polynomial, 2x cubed minus 10x squared plus 11x and minus 7, and we divide it by x minus 4, we're going to get this trinomial here, that's the quotient, and the remainder k. So let's do some long division. And incidentally, the problem before on the regents was also a long division problem. So to do the long division, we say how many times does x go into 2x cubed? That's 2x squared. 
and then we do 2x squared times x minus 4. What do we get? 2x cubed minus 8x squared. Subtract these out. We get negative 10. These cancel the 2x cubed, they're the same. And then we have negative 10x squared minus negative 8x squared, so that's negative 10 plus 8x squared, which is negative 2x squared. And then we bring down the 11x. How many times does this x go into negative 2x? You just do negative 2x. Negative 2x times x is negative 2x squared. And negative 2x times negative 4 is positive 8x. Subtract, see what's left over. This is just basic polynomial long division. These terms cancel, and this is 3x. Bring down our negative 7. How many times is x going to 3x? And you know, to solve that question, to answer that question, I always take this term and I divide it by this one. 3x divided by x will be the answer of that question. And that is just uh, 3 plus 3. So we have 3 times x minus 4. We get 3x minus 12. And we're subtracting these things. So we get 3x minus 3x is nothing. Negative 7 minus negative 12 is 5. That's our remainder. Now, this tells you everything you need to know. Because here, this is our h term. h equals negative 2. right? That's, this is the trinomial we multiply x minus 4 by. Uh, th sorry, this is the trinomial we get when we divide our polynomial by x minus 4. And that's the h term. It's the middle term here. And this is the remainder. This is the k term. And this is an algebraic process. Long division is certainly algebra. So that's another way of solving it. Hope you enjoyed that.